In our previous lecture, we said there were two types of stability that we were going to examine, internal stability and external stability. In this lecture, we'll look more at external stability and we'll examine a particular type of external stability referred to as bounded input, bounded output stability, or BIBO stability. Recall external stability meant that a system's output behaved nicely when a nice input was applied. Let's now talk a little more precisely about what we mean. So here is a very important definition which we use for external stability. We've brought out the frame of importance so that you know that this is something we're going to be discussing again and again. The definition of bounded input, bounded output stability, sometimes called BIBO. A system is BIBO stable if and only if every bounded input produces a bounded output. Let's look at an example. And our example, again, is the bucket system. Consider what happens to the bucket system when we put in a bounded input. And our bounded input is going to be a unit step signal. This signal is bounded because it's contained below some upper and lower limits at all times. The output of the bucket system with this input, which corresponds to a constant flow rate, is y of t equals t over a u of t. This is a ramp signal and it's unbounded. We can't find any upper and lower bounds to contain this signal for all time. So we have a bounded input producing an unbounded output. Therefore, the bucket system is BIBO unstable. It is important to point out that while the bucket system is BIBO unstable, it does not take every bounded input and produce an unbounded output. Some bounded inputs produce bounded outputs. For example, the input x of t equals u of t minus u of t minus 1. This is shown in the diagram and corresponds to us turning the water on for a period of time and then turning it off. The output is then the signal y of t given, which ramps up and then is held constant. The output here is bounded. We can find upper and lower bounds for this signal. The lesson is clear. Not every bounded input produces an unbounded output when the system is BIBO unstable. But there exists a bounded input which produces an unbounded output. I want to close this presentation by talking about why we use bounded inputs to measure external stability. Why BIBO? This is a question I'm asked by students all the time. They don't understand the definition of stability, why it was formulated this way. So I want to try to clear up any confusion you might have about the subject. Let's try to do this with an analogy. How can you tell a good dog from a bad dog? Now obviously you could look for the horns or the halo, but I'm looking for something that's more input-output than that. Now for the nice dog, if I give him nice input, say some juicy bones, I'll get a nice output. A dog might wag his tail or take a nap. But if I take the nice dog and give it some sort of bad input, I can expect some sort of bad output. I might even get bitten. If I looked at this bad behavior, I might think that the nice dog wasn't a nice dog. But of course, he is. He's just responding to a bad input. On the other hand, if I give nice inputs to a bad dog, well, sometimes I might get a nice output, but sometimes I'm going to get a bad output. That's the thing about bad dogs they sometimes respond badly even when you don't expect it. So you see the nice inputs allow us to discriminate between the nice dog and the bad dog. This is the idea behind BIBO stability. We put in nice inputs, that is bounded inputs, into our nice system 
that is the Bebo stable system. And whenever we put in a bounded input to our nice system, we're going to get a nice bounded output. We don't want to use unbounded inputs for a test of stability. An unbounded input, even to a nice system, can produce an unbounded output. So it's not a very good test of stability to use an unbounded input. Just like hitting a nice dog is not a good way of telling if it's a nice dog. So the use of nice inputs, bounded inputs, to a Bebo unstable system to see how it behaves is an ideal kind of input to use. Because we know that a nice system will not respond in a bad way to a nice input. It's only the bad system that responds in a bad way to a nice input. Now it's important to note that some nice inputs might result in our bad dog producing a nice output. The key thing that makes the bad dog a bad dog is it sometimes responds badly to a nice input. The key thing that makes a Bebo unstable system a Bebo unstable system is that sometimes it responds badly to a nice input, a nice bounded input. We saw this with our water bucket system earlier in this lecture. We saw that some bounded inputs resulted in a nice bounded output, but other bounded inputs resulted in an unbounded output. The key thing for Bebo instability is that there exists a bounded input, a nice input, which will produce a bad output. I hope this analogy now makes it clear to you why we look at bounded inputs when we're trying to test for stability of systems. Now obviously we can't test a system by trying every single bounded input. There are an infinite number of bounded inputs. We need another, more mathematical way of determining system stability or instability.